So the first thing we need to do when setting up an, our aeration oxidation test is to go ahead and prepare the hydrogen peroxide solution. So we're going to start with pipetting out the 10 mils that the test calls for. So you just go ahead and let the solution come out of the pipette. You notice at the end there's a little bit left in the tip. That's okay. Uh, go ahead and leave that in there. The pipettes have actually been designed to, to deliver basically the 10 mils when left with the finger off and then the little bit that stays in the tip won't throw anything off at all. The next step from now is we want to go ahead and add like six to eight drops of our color indicator which is the SO2 indicator. Normally, if I'm running the test, I would go ahead and just use six. I'm using eight here just so that the color change can be really clear for an example's sake. So you noticed when I went ahead and dropped that in there that the solution turned to a magenta pink color. How this SO2 indicator works is that any solution that it goes into, uh, if it's acidic, it turns pink. And when it turns more basic, it goes ahead and turns green. And that's actually the basis, the foundation of the whole entire test itself. So what we're going to see here is I'm going to go ahead and add distilled water to the 50 mil mark. Now, distilled water is going to be uh, a lot more basic, uh, less acidic than the hydrogen peroxide solution was. So what you're going to see is I'm adding this to the solution. Pay attention to what's happening with the color. So you can see we have a shift now going from the pink into kind of like a gray color. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and swirl it. You can see the complete. So now, instead of being that kind of pink, very clear pinkish solution, we've got kind of more of a charcoal gray greenish uh, kind of a color going on here. Now, the SO2 test basically works on starting at that precise difference of where that pink turns just to that charcoaly green or to the green color. And then any SO2 that is released as part of the test, and we'll get to that in a minute, that's basically a sulfur gas. And that gas gets trapped in the hydrogen peroxide, and that sulfur gas is acidic and the solution here becomes more acidic and then we get a color change. So the bottom line is that anything that's acidic coming through here, if we see the pink color happening, then we know that there was sulfur gas happening. But the important part about that in order to measure that is we need to know exactly when, when exactly was that color change that happened. Now me squirting in that 50 mils or 40 mils of that distilled water uh, to get us up to that 50 mil mark, um, I wasn't measuring that when it's going to be different depending on what the strength or the acidity of each hydrogen peroxide solution is. So the cool way what we can find out to get us back to that color change is uh, by going more acidic again to get more to the pink sides and that's why we've included hydrochloric acid as part of the test kit. So I'm using a separate pipette to go ahead and add a couple drops of this to get us back to the pink color. Uh, you can go ahead and use the 10 mil pipette that came with the kit. You're going to have to just make sure you rinse everything really well with distilled water. But for convenience sake right now for the test, uh, maybe it's a little bit easier if you're running a bunch of them side by side. Um, I have a separate pipette for this demonstration for each of the solutions. And you may want to think about picking up a couple extra pipettes. They're pretty cheap if you're running a bunch of tests um, in your own lab. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding one drop of the hydrochloric acid to kind of turn our solution a little bit more acidic. So I'll do one drop there, and I'm going to put a spin on it. And you can see the solution went from that kind of charcoaly color to kind of a pinkish charcoaly color. I'll go ahead and swirl it some more. And you see the pink color is not super, super strong, but it's definitely pretty clear. It's kind of like a dirty pinkish color. I'm going to go ahead now and add one more drop. Oop, let me go ahead and pull it up there. I'm going to add one more drop just to show very clearly the color changes of a hydrochloric acid. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, one drop there, and I'll go ahead and swirl it. And you can see very strong pink, bam. So really right on the cusp there. So where we want to start our test is actually where it just turned to kind of the charcoaly gray greenish color. So if acid makes it pink, then bases make it green. And as part of the test kit, what we're testing with is with sodium hydroxide. So I've already used the 10 mil syringe and pulled up uh, basically some of our sodium hydroxide. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one drop into here. Just be careful and go slow, okay? And one drop to our solution. And oh, two of us, you got in the wrong mistake, but that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it. And you can see it went from the pink color to kind of, kind of a charcoaly, kind of grayish color. I'm gonna add one more drop just to show you what happens once we go from that transition. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it there. And you can see a very clear, strong green color from there. Okay, that's basically the starting point of where we want to begin our test, like that. So if by chance, just to also show this as well, if by chance you make a mistake and you over, and you over add drops, you over titrate your solution either one way or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and add, let's say like we we'll add one, and then we'll add, you know, shake that off for two. And go ahead and spin him like that goes back to there and just for argument's sake I'll go ahead and just add one more just to get a really clear bright you know pinkish color there we go there go ahead and turn that yep got a really strong pinkish color there cool if you add one or two drops one way or the other it really doesn't matter and the really nice thing about that is all you need to do is basically take the opposite solution that you just used in order to get that and just titrate it back to that color change again. Nothing is lost and you're not gonna mess up the test in any way. But, but I would really suggest going by like a drop at a time, okay? Go ahead and turn that. You can see it went from the pink pretty strongly to kind of a, again, kind of a grayish, kind of a grayish color there. I like to go one more drop into, not from the gray, but actually going to where I get a very, the first drop into from the gray to get kind of a clean green color like that. That's where I like to start. Uh, a couple of my friends, when they like to run their labs, they actually like to go just from the pink to the gray transition phase. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that wherever you start your test on this color change, when it comes to the end and we actually factor out uh, at the end when we run our oxidation test and we titrate back to find the end point, it's important that you get the same color that you basically started the test with. So if you like to go from a charcoaly olivey gray, great, go ahead and titrate back to that point. If you like it to go just into a very clear, clean green, uh, that's what I like to do, but by all no means is that obligatory, then you just go ahead and make sure you titrate that one extra drop to get you back to the green, and that will be consistent when you go ahead and factor your test. And that's pretty much it.